This is one of the most strangest cases I've ever heard, and that's saying a lot. I remember hearing about this story back in high school, and it's been with me ever since. It's so tragic and so scary what this family goes through. The father, Ron, had just won a week's vacation for him and his wife, Iva. Wanted to make it a family vacation, he invites his son, Brad, and his daughter, Amy. Amy at first did not want to go, but with some encouragement from her family, she decided it was the worst that could happen. Little did they know that this trip would change their lives forever. Now before we get into the story, I'm Felix Arajo and this is Strange Matters, where we talk about mysteries, monsters, and the strange. If you're a fan of any of that, please subscribe and scare that like button by flicking it. Now let's get into today's mystery. It's March of 98, and even though at first Amy did not want to go, she seemed to warm up to the idea and even went tanning to be nice and dark for the cruise. She and her brother Brad were close. They always hung out, had each other's back, and they seemed to just have a very great brother and sister relationship. It was the day of the trip, and now she was super excited. They were going on a Caribbean cruise, and the name of the cruise was the Rhapsody of the Seas. When the family first arrived, they had a blast. They spent the whole day together, then went exploring and shopping, and they just had a fun day in Aruba. Later on that day, they got back on the boat, took showers, and got dressed up for a dinner on the boat. They took their pictures, and they just had a nice family dinner. They split up after Ron and Ivo went to go meet up with some co-workers since it was technically still a work trip. Brad and Amy stood back and got ready to go get some drinks, except is that there was this waiter who had his eye on Amy. He wanted to take her out of the boat and show her the nightlife of Aruba, and he seemed to come on a little too hard. Amy passed on the offer, and her and Brad went to put casual clothes on because they were going to go and test their luck at the casino. They both ended up winning over $150 each. They went to go count their money on the deck. Ron and Iva met with them a bit later on the deck, and they all decided to go down to the disco and do this limbo contest. While they were there, Amy starts to have a conversation with the bass player of the band. They call him Yellow, but his real name was Alistair Douglas. And there's even video of the two dancing. Amy's obviously having a good time as she should. She was single, young, and on vacation. The Bradley luck would continue as Brad ended up winning the limbo contest. After that, Ron and Iba were tired, so they ended up calling it a night and going to their room. At 2.45 in the morning, Ron wakes up and saw that Amy and Brad were still not in their room. So he goes check the club and he sees Brad dancing with a bunch of girls and Amy is talking to the band member and to the rest of the band. Ron's like whatever, they're still having fun and he goes back to bed. At 3.45 a.m. Brad goes back to their room and Amy follows him about 15 minutes later. They both went out to their private deck which no one else could access and have a smoke. According to Brad, they were just talking and laughing about the limbo contest. They even said that they should go jet skiing the next day. At some point, Brad says he's calling it a night and goes back in. She says she'll be right behind him. And sadly, that would be the last time they would see each other. He says that he told her he loved her right before going to bed. At 5.30 a.m., Ron wakes up again. He sees Amy sitting out on the balcony. She was just laying there. So he guessed she had fallen asleep and just leaves her to rest. Ron says that that would become one of his biggest regrets. Only 30 minutes later, he woke up and goes to wake her up. And Amy is gone. He didn't want to wake up the rest of the family because he thought maybe she just went out to go get some coffee or maybe a snack. It's a cruise ship so people leave their room all the time. Some more time passed and she still hadn't come back. So Ron goes looking for her and she is nowhere to be seen. He looked for an hour and still no sign of Amy. Now he's in panic. He wakes up Iva and Brad and says I can't find Amy anywhere. So now the whole family is looking all over the boat, calling her name, doing anything to get her attention. At this point, they go talk to the captain because the boat has just arrived at Curacao. They beg the captain to please don't let anyone off. 
Amy might be held captive on the boat and they don't want anyone to take her off. The captain was honestly a bit of a jerk. He said no. He said he didn't want to worry the other passengers. The only thing he said yes to was have people check the boat. The family starts looking again, but something weird happens. The guy yellow comes up to Brad and says sorry to hear about your sister. But that was before anyone else knew aside from the Bradley family. So how would he know Amy was missing? So the captain starts to let people off the cruise ship. Thousands of people are leaving the boat and the Bradleys are in panic. Should they stay on the boat or get off and look for her in Curacao? Two girls come forward and say they had seen Amy heading to the disco that morning with Yellow by her side. But the crews keep saying they checked there and the entire boat every nook and cranny. And now to top that off, the cruise ship is telling the Bradley family they better stay in Curacao because they're leaving the port with or without them. The captain tells them if you decide to go with us, you will not be able to go back to Curacao if Amy happens to show up there. I can't imagine the stress and anxiety that family must have been feeling at that moment. Amy could be dead, kidnapped, who knows. And it seems that no one wants to help. So they decide the best bet is to get off the boat, they check into a hotel in Curacao, and this time they call the US Embassy and family members. Except the embassy is already closed by then, so they would have to wait till the morning. Ivor's brother John, who is back in the US, contacts the FBI. Once the FBI got involved, they realized that the cruise ship did not properly check the boat. They only searched the common areas, like the cafeteria, the decks, but they didn't even check the boat's bedrooms. When the Bradleys found out, they were pissed. The only reason they got off the boat was because they were told the boat had been completely cleared and come to find out that was a lie. So the FBI and the Bradleys go meet up with the crews on their next port and confront the captain saying you did not search the entire ship and the FBI is here to do their own investigation. The FBI really do start to check every single space on that boat but at this point days, days had already passed. So honestly, by then, it was too late. The FBI didn't find anything. Not all is lost because those two girls did say they saw Amy with that guy Yellow that morning she disappeared. And he had said that weird comment to Brad about his sister missing when there's no way he could have known that. They decide to interview Yellow and he agrees to a lie detector test and he passes it with flying colors. He gets done with the polygraph, gets out of the room, and gives the Bradleys a thumbs up and a smile, which is kind of strange if you ask me. When he spoke to the FBI, he completely changed his story. He said he didn't know Amy, and that he never said that to Brad, and that he has no idea what happened. Another strange thing that happened was that all of the photos that the crews had taken, like when you go to Disneyland and they take photos of you, and they try to sell it to you at the end. While well, all the photos of just Amy were gone. That's when the Bradley family started to think that this was bigger than they thought. Maybe there was a conspiracy going on. They finally returned home, sadly without Amy. But the Bradleys were not gonna give up. They went campaigning to the media to put a spotlight on Amy's investigation. And they actually got some feedback from a taxi driver who was there when the crews docked in Puerto Rico. He said he saw a man forcing Amy Bradley into a car. There's really no reason for this guy to lie. He didn't receive any money or anything from the family. So the Bradleys gave this info to the FBI to investigate. Eight months later, they found out the FBI had not done anything with that information. The Bradleys were pissed so they decide to start to investigate on their own. They met a man named Carr Michael, and he said that he and a group of friends were cleaning their scuba diving gear on the beach when he saw a woman walking with two men right behind her. Once she heard Carr Michael speak in English, she basically ran towards him, 
right before she could say a word, those two men grab and pull her away. Carmichael doesn't like that, so he decides to follow them, and he notices that she has a Tasmanian Devil tattoo on her shoulder. The family felt like the FBI and the detectives were not doing enough, so they take matters into their own hands, and they hire their own special force. Man's name is Frank Jones. Jones is a private investigator who claims that Amy is being held captive. So the Bradleys didn't have the money to afford this guy, and it's actually Ron's boss who is paying for this man. And this special force guy is named Frank Jones. He's stalking out nightclubs and is doing everything that was necessary to get her back. Then he says he finally found her, and that he will be able to get her out, but big but he will first need a hundred thousand dollars to complete the mission and ron's boss is willing to pay the money but before he did he sent someone down there to see what he was doing when he got there he was shocked at what he found frank jones had not been doing a damn thing he was using the money to drink and on brothels Frank had even sent photos of Amy on the beach with her tattoos. She had different tattoos. She had a Tasmanian on her shoulder, a lower back sun tattoo, and a shiny symbol on her ankle. So this Jones guy literally paid someone to look like Amy, put fake tattoos on her, and posed her on the beach. He made the Bradley family waste time, money, and resources on this whole fake thing. Luckily, he was arrested and sent to jail for fraud. Until this day, he is still in prison and good. I hope he stays there for a long time. He took advantage of this family who was desperate to get their daughter back. There was a couple more sightings of Amy. One was of a naval officer at a brothel. He claims he was just there to get a drink. Sure. He says he saw Amy and that she came up to him and said, my name is Amy, please get me help but he waited two whole years before coming forward. And by the time they went to go search for that brothel, it had already been burnt down. Years later, they were sent a photo and it was sent anonymously. A forensic scientist even said that it was a perfect match and that he would bet his career on it. I personally think it does look like her. And honestly, it breaks my heart to see that. They tried to trace the IP address, but nothing really came of it. Another sighting of Amy was in 2005. It was a woman and her husband. The woman's name was Judy Marr. They went to a trip to Barbados, and while there, she was at a mall. She went to use the restroom, when all of a sudden, someone barges in, and it's a woman who sounds distressed. A man came in with her and was yelling at her, saying, this is my deal, don't mess up my deal, you have to do this. It sounds like the man leaves the bathroom, so Judy decides to come out and tries to talk to Amy. She asks what her name is, and she whispers, Amy. And Judy says loudly, wow, that's the name of my daughter. And Amy has a shocked face and gets close to Judy, kind of letting her know to keep her voice down. The man comes back in, and Judy, understandably afraid, busts out of the bathroom and passes four men waiting outside. The Bradley family ended up suing the Royal Caribbean for being negligent. The FBI came out with the age progressed photo of her. I honestly believe Amy was kidnapped and brought into sex trafficking. It happens a lot more than you think. It happens to women and men, especially on vacation. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help with the algorithm. And if you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you haven't, go ahead and turn on the bell notifications so you are notified when I upload new videos. And a very special shout out to my Patreon supporters. You guys are effing amazing. You keep this channel going. If you want to help this channel keep going, please think about supporting my Patreon. Anything helps. That's all for today, guys. Let me know if you want to hear more of these type of stories. See you guys later. Take care.